Hello everyone, Vicki Verley here, the Rock and Roll Prophetess. Today we're going to do a year ahead reading for all 12 of the zodiac signs, and this is for the year of 2024. This is a scaled down version of the personal reading that I offer, so I thought I would give you an idea. Uh, many people are ordering it, many of you order every year. Most popular reading of the year, but just so you can kind of get an idea. Now, if we were doing the personal reading, we would start out with astrology that relates specifically to you as far as maybe the eclipses and some of the big transits are going to affect your personal planets. And then we move into this part of the reading, which is going to be the tarot reading. Now, I break the tarot reading down into the four quarters of the year in three-month increments, starting January, February, March, April, May, June, October, November, December, and then uh, <laughs> July, August, September, October, November, December. I had those mixed up a little, but yeah, you get the idea. And then what I do in the personal reading is I put three cards out per row for you. Now, just for the sake of time, we're just going to do two cards for these general readings. Um, and then... We also will pull a animal totem, which I believe I will include, okay? So without further ado, let's get into our sample 2024 uh, year ahead reading. And we're going to start with the sign of Aries. Well, I would, if you're in Aries, I would be talking about the eclipses in Aries coming up and how they're going to affect your chart and your planet specifically. But really, we're just going to do the tarot reading. Now, usually I do a cut, but for this first one for January, February, March, we're going to put those two cards, and then we're going to go April, May, June. And actually, I should shuffle some more, but we're going to leave it as is. Now, again, when I do your personal reading, I do three cards per row, but just for to condense it down a little, and for the sake of time, we're going to just do two cards for this purpose, okay? July, August, September. And then finally, October, November, December. And this is going to be for Aries Sun Sign, Rising Sign, or Moon for the year 2024. Okay, and then we've got these cards. So we can, as everything on the screen, we might have to do a little arranging here, a little rearranging. Aries, you're always the first, so there's always a little bit of... Uh, rearranging that has to be done perhaps okay here we go yeah we're starting out you know that ten of rods did want to come out there so that ten of rods is sort of carrying this heavy load but it looks like by the time we get to the water energy which is going to be as we move into pisces through late february and march that you're going to arrive whatever you've been striving for working for you're going to get there. There could ac also actually be a water sign person involved who would be a Scorpio, Cancer, or Pisces. But it really feels like this is a timing factor for us, and we're looking at by whatever heavy load you're bringing in, a lot of it should be cleared up in water sign, and, and right before we're going to move into your sign of, you know, your time of Aries and your solar return. April, May, June, you're working on something, and you're just really engrossed in it, and you're really loving it. And you're ready to take it out and show it to the world. Now, some of you, this could just be a card of we're going to have this big success, which often that is what the chariot does, uh, you know, talk about having this big success. But also, I feel for some of you, you might be, somebody who's out there is going to be maybe attending some kind of big trade show or even maybe a local kind of a fair or craft show if you're making something where you're going to travel with your stuff and like show it to the world to great success and great, uh, you know, accolades. July, August, September here, you know, this Ace of Rods is here, so this is that fire energy. This is kind of one of the cards that I really associate with you because it is a new beginning and it is this spark of fire, and it points right up at this. So I feel what you're doing here or what you're showing or what the way you're presenting your stuff out to the world, this is where it's going to really start to take root, and then you've got all this money backing you too. Could be the earned money just from doing what you want, you know, what's funny, I said what you want, but doing this thing that you love here, or this putting yourself out in the world, or this this craft, this show, trade show, that's the word I really want to use. I, I keep saying craft show, so for some of you, it could be a craft show, right? Whatever the case, when we get into these months, you're really going to see the profits. You know, and sometimes when you do a lot of work for people, you have to do these 30-day invoices. I remember that from my graphic design days. So sometimes you can do a lot of work for somebody, and then you don't see the money for like another month or so. So that could be the case, too. But whatever the case, the financial prosperity is continuing on in this quarter. Get to the end of the year, major completion of a major cycle. Well, 
I do believe that is when the nodes are going to be finally finishing up in your sign. I should have kind of looked that up before I started. Um, but at any rate, it, I do believe it is associated with the nodes for you. And again, if we were to do your personal reading, we would look exactly into that. But let me just take a quick peek here. Yeah, it is going to be, you know, right away, um, in early, like January, February, we're going to change signs. So it is wrapping up that nodes in your sign. So that's a big time of a lot of karmic stuff, what you've processed. Again, in a personal reading, I would get right into your planets and all this other stuff. And you're ready for the next phase. So you're ready, you're building again. You've reached some pinnacle of success, you've reaped the rewards, and then you're ready to build the next thing. And remember now, the next thing that you're building, this is for the next 18 to 19 years. So it's not a short term, uh, you guys, uh, this wants to come out so I'm going to let it. Um, you know, you guys are not the short term uh, kind of people, you're, you're the starters. But this is a start and a finish and a completion of a whole cycle. You've got the bare energy for your totem. The bear goes into hibernation, so the bear has its resting time, and then it has its time when it comes out of hibernation. Usually in the northern hemisphere, you know, in the spring around your birthday. But let's see what we've got here. Majestic wise spirit, star brother of the north, retreat into the womb of the great mother to emerge anew. Define your territory, set boundaries, and create sacred space. You know, when I see this card... I do feel like for some of you this is this. Some of you might even be building a home or something and literally creating your sacred space. Okay, so Aries, that is your reading, brief reading, broken down mini kind of reading, <laughs> condensed for 2024. Again, if you want to get a personal reading that goes into more astrology and more cards, uh, you can find all that stuff from my website at vickyverly.com. Don't be fooled by imposters. Next, we're going to move on to the sign of Taurus. Okay, Taurus. Well, you know, there's a lot of astrology for Tauruses in general in 2024. Jupiter's going to be in your sign for the first few months, it's, and you still have Uranus in your sign. So there will certainly be you know, things to talk about in your chart if you're a Taurus. Sun, rising, moon, anything. Let's look at January, February, March for the Taurus Collective for 2024. We've got the Two of Cups, followed by the Ace of Cups. So definitely some love energy, some love mojo. This one wanted to flip, so we're going to take that for the first for April, May, June. July, August, September for Scorpio. Funny I said Scorpio, but it's Taurus. But Scorpio is your opposite sign, that's why I said that. Okay, July, August, September. Wow, love. Love is going to be happening for Tor many Tauruses out there, big time. This is this whole reading practically so far is love, 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 love. And then October, November, December. You give me love, 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 love. Crazy love, you give me love, Ooh. <laughs> love, 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 crazy love, yeah, so getting some crazy love going, Taurus, yeah, who, right, I mean, all, all the way through, all, other than these two cards, this is just, this, this is the year of love, all right, like that, right, Taurus, well, after all, you know, Venus is your ruling planet, so the year of love is right up your alley. If you're single, there's definitely some new beginnings starting towards the beginning of the year. Ace of Cups, New Beginning, Love, Two of Cups, Soulmate, they're following right in a row. And they go 1 through 10. You've got the 1, the 2, the 4, the 9, and the 10. So you've got almost the whole progression through the whole, you know, starting with the Ace and getting all the way up to the 10. But definitely big time love stuff. You know, some of you, it, it's not romantic love. It could be a child is born, or it could be a grandchild is born. Or it could be a great friendship. Somebody's going to some ball games or something. That's what I'm seeing, like baseball games at some stadium. That's such a random thing to throw out there. But this is maybe you've got a buddy to go to the ball game with or something, a soulmate of that sort. But for most, it's probably going to be just this really kind of romantic love, you know, heartfelt thing, which continues on through. Some of you, there could be a marriage proposal and a marriage. I mean, this could be a marriage proposal in this kind of a lineup. Somebody's offering you something here. And sometimes this card can be like, eh, I'm not sure I want it, and it's kind of a meh. But with the wish card, you definitely want it. You know, it's not a meh. It's a yay. You know, Yahoo, we want this. I keep saying Yahoo. That's such a weird... It's not something I really go around and, and say. You know, it's funny when, you, when I stop for a second here and think about Yahoo. It's I'm not proud of it, but when we were kids, that's what we used to do when we would... It was called Yahoo and Beers. <laughs> We'd go in the store and grab some beers, and you, you had to yell Yahoo as you were running out the door. Like, you could probably have gotten away with it without the 
store clerk even noticing you, but you had to make sure that you said, Yahoo! And they chased you or something, I don't know. I had such a weird thing, to, a weird memory to come into my head. And I only did it maybe three times in my life, but that was a thing when we were kids. It was even called Yahooing beers. Let's go Yahoo some beers, man. <laughs> I don't know if that's a regional thing or what, and I'm not proud of it, and you should never steal. I'm, you know, I'm not proud of stealing at all, especially from little stores, because those are mom and pop places, you know, that's somebody's business usually. But I digress. I don't know why I went off on that tangent, but because I, I keep saying Yahoo. Uh, but anyways, this looks so fabulous. Wishes are coming true. Wishes are coming true about an offer that you are wanting, you know, something that, this isn't a poo-poo, oh, I don't know, maybe thing. This is like, oh, this is the offer I've been wanting, I've been waiting for. It's a wish come true. Got the Nine and the Ten of Cups following into July, September. It's interesting that you have the Ten of Cups and the Magician both. So that's really cool in a way, you know, because the Ten of Cups is involved with everybody. Here we were all happy and we're all a family together. And it's about this whole group dynamic. And then the Magician is so much the ind individual, so much. It's the number one, the individual. And what I want to take out of this is whoever this person is or whatever this situa uh, situation or scenario is, you know they they support you and they allow you to be yourself and you, you you it's not they're not threatened by you you know your ambition or your drive or what you're striving for you have that you still you're not um, you're not married to uh, you know um, an idea of what's only group and and I can't be better than you know there's no competition it's like yeah you do you you do you and they and they are, they celebrate you you know what I mean October, November, December, especially in Scorpio time, it would seem, the water sign time. Or you may be dealing with the water sign person, or that may just, when I saw this, I would say this is just your love person, no, regardless of gender, right? This is your love person, the cup person, all these cups. But also, for a timer, this could be in the time of water, which is going to be that Scorpio time, late October into November of 2024. And then you've got that Justice card. So that justice card is some kind of a legal thing, perhaps coming to a head, or or you know, but in a good way, and it could also be maybe signing of some kind of a contract for some. But this seems to be a, also some kind of a culmination. With the ten of cups is a culmination, and the justice is a culmination. I mean, maybe some of you are just like, hey, we're getting along so great. You know, there's an old saying, you want to make it legal, and maybe you're gonna go make it legal, which means like go get married or whatever. Okay. Let's get the animal totem for... I'm going to shuffle this and walk up and shut my door because I think I can hear some noise from outside. And I want to create a good space for our readings here without a bunch of outside noise. I'm going to shut all the doors. Okay, we're going to get an animal totem for 2024 for our Taurus friends. What do we got here? The dog. Well, dog is that loyal companion and everything, and that's also these are going some are going the wrong way. It looks like yeah. That's also your pack, your tribe. You know, the dogs are always a pack animal, and it's loyalty, friendship. It's all good stuff. So a lot, of, it's happiness too. Dogs are happy. You know, they are very happy creatures. Loyal companion, protector, ally, immense capacity, immense capacity for unconditional love. Yeah, that's definitely going on, right? Service to the pack. Group incarnation, yeah, so these soulmates are this whole group incarnation. To have friends, you must be a friend, yeah. That's an important thing. I used to always tell my kids when they were little. If you want to have friends, you got to be a friend. Okay. All right, everybody. Well, thanks for tuning in for your Taurus reading. Don't forget to check out your sun, rising, moon. And again, if you want to order the personal reading, we go a lot more into details on a lot of things, and I'd be tuning in directly to you. This is just, like I said, sort of a sample so you can sort of get an idea of what it's about and maybe even get some insights for your own year ahead. Okay, Geminis, let's go into your uh, cards for the four quarters of the year of 2024. And this is for Geminis, the sun, rising, moon. Let's see what we got here. Ten of rods to ace of cups. Like that. Love that a lot. Okay, next. April, May, June for our Geminis, your birthday time, solar return. Temperance and Hermit, two major arcana, two higher spiritual cards. July, August, September for our Geminis for 2024. 
the Devil and the Page of Pentacles. And then finally, October, November, December for our Gemini friends for the year of 2024 coming up. Geminis, Sun Rising Moons, Ten of Swords, Chariot. Wow, night and day. The Phoenix Rises for sure, right? Let's get a little bit of a better spacing for ourselves here. Well, whatever you're, you've been really working on, there's going to be a break. There's going to be a break from having to struggle, struggle, struggle. They're talking about you get to the sweet spot or you get to the fun part. To me, it feels like it's the fun part. They're, saying, they're showing me the icing on the, the cake. So for maybe some of you, you don't really like to, um, you know, if you're baking, you don't like the baking part, but you like doing the icing and the decorating. This is the, after the hard work, now comes the fun part. You know, and this is feeling really positive and really good. And again, with the water sign energy showing up here, could be talking about maybe as we go into the water sign time of late February, March, but this Ace of Cups, this is could be new love blooming, but paired with the Ten of Broads, it's kind of like after a period of hard work, now we have the enjoyment. April, May, June, you're definitely in this high spiritual mode, and that's, you know, that's your birthday solar return time for Gemini sun signs. It's also powerful if you're Gemini rising, you know, because it goes over your ascendant at that time, the sun and all the planets do. So it's a new beginning, but really co-creating with the universe. When you got the Hermit, and then you've got the Temperance card, you know, you're, you're doing that co-creation with the universe. Get in and do that kind of meditative stuff. Get in there and really do your spiritual work, really define, I saw define here, and let that happen too, there's no word define, but I saw define, define your, your territory, but define your, uh, you know, your, what you want to create for the upcoming year, define your, um, your, your affirmations rather than your resolutions, I, you know, I hate New Year's resolutions because it's just magnifying what you don't want, you want to do those affirmations, and by the way, of course, every year around your birthday, is your your per, your personal new year where you're starting that's the most powerful time not january 1st january 1st is kind of just a random day really you know <laughs> okay then july august september you're in bondage to something so you're bad it feels kind of feels tied back to this hard work or carrying this heavy load but in this time of earth there could be some news coming about some financial gains it's a payment coming news gain a perk you know, all these are grabbing me. These all the keywords are really grabbing me. Now, the Earth sign time frame in um, in this quadrant is going to be in Virgo. So we're going to be talking late August into September, where maybe this perk or something could come through for you. October, November, December. Now, this is heavy. You know, this is some heavy stuff. You got that Ten of Swords leading into the Chariot. So that the Chariot often is that you know Phoenix rising from the ashes, and this could be the ashes. You know, something is going to be winding down where it's just not going to be viable anymore. You're going to maybe just have to let it go, and the, you'll feel great in the freedom of it. Some of you, there could be some kind of a surgery. I'm not a medical professional and I'm not giving medical advice, but I am picking up like there could be getting something like maybe getting your tonsils out or getting your gallbladder or appendix removed or something, you know, something along those lines where it's been bothering you, bothering you, bothering you, and then you finally get the surgery. Because sometimes the, all these sores can be a surgery and then, you, you know, you feel great. But again, I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not giving medical advice. Um, because this, there's so much strong energy between this... Um, the phoenix i want to kind of relate it maybe towards the time of scorpio because the scorpio is also very much connected to the phoenix energy of the death and rebirth the rising from the ashes and everything okay let's go ahead and get to animal totem for gemini's for the year of 2024 for our gemini friends oh i got two i'm gonna let them both come but it's really the horse but you also are dealing with some snake energy Snake energy is kundalini, you know, um, it's also that shedding of the skin, it's the death and rebirth. But the horse is the more stronger one, and it's interesting, well that was the one that was on top, you know. It was interesting that it shows right next to the chariot, because one of the big things about the horse energy is that it is, um, you know, transportation, as is the chariot. There's, there's sphinxes on here, but I mean, it horses too would pull a chariot. Magic, divination, astral travel, journey, ride like the wind to the furthest reaches, expand beyond your comfort zone, and explore the realms of possibility. Yeah. So there could be a situation that's culminating or you're feeling pushed out of. You know, Jupiter's going to be in your sign after, uh, what's the month on that one? Uh, in May. 
in May, Jupiter goes into your sign. So that's going to be something really cool that if you order the personal reading, we could check out, you know, in more detail. But uh, overall, it's a time of great attraction and abundance, and it's once every 12-year cycle. Again, if you want to check into uh, how it would, this whole thing would play out for you, you can order that personal reading. Available on my website for a limited time. And next, we're going to move on to the sign of Cancer. Hello, Cancers. Let's see what's coming up for Cancers for the year of 2024. I almost said 2022 of all things. That's very strange. But there could be some recall or some things coming back from 2022 for some people. But we're looking at January, February, March for 2024. Knight of Cups, that's you looking at the Eight of Swords. Next, we're going to do uh, April, May, June. April, May, June for our Cancers for 2024. And we have Ace of Cups to Nine of Pentacles. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. Okay, July, August, September. This is your solar return time every year. Solstice, it's always powerful time for all Cancers. Sun rising and moon all because the, that Solstice energy is super powerful. Well, it's actually June, but yeah. Cancers, late June, but we're still in Cancer as we kick off this this quadrant. Okay, and then October, November, December for our Cancer Collective. October, November, December. My dog had a bunch of burrs on him, and I pulled them off. It's like I got some little splinters or something on my fingers. Okay, there we go. All right, kicking off the year. This is you. The water sign energy regardless of gender and you know you're, you're moving towards the future but you have you know you have some trepidation you've got this eight of swords you've got some stress self-imposed stress this is getting in your head this is getting in your head and getting worried and having this stressful um you know talking yourself out of it getting in your head they're saying stay out of don't go to your head but stay in your heart because that's your that's your realm the water sign energy you know that's the emotional you're very emotional um, and below you do have the Ace of Cups leading right up to you. So don't talk yourself out of it. Don't get crazy. Don't get worried. I'm sorry. I have a cough drop in my mouth. Um, because as we move into the April, May, June uh, sector, we've got this Ace of Cups leading the Nine of Pentacles. This is, well, I mean, the whole year after this looks great. The, the only thing that's the holdup is your own head. Everything else looks fabulous all the way, but really here... Something that you're doing that is your dream job, your dream business, your dream side hustle, it's going to all of a sudden take off and flourish. You're going to be in this where it's, it's, it's just a dream. You know, it's still in the realm of the cup energy, the emotional energy. It's still in the dream state. And then, wow, just open up, flourish, magnificence, you know, super successful, especially because it aligns with these other cards too, because those are what lines this way is all part of the story too. And you know, you're we're moving down to here and you've got all oh, more success. Your ships are coming in, pointing all up at this nine of pentacles. Now often the nine of pentacles it can be your own business. Or you know, it's it's your own thing. It's something that you've done it's um it's something that you've created for yourself, whether within the realm of the company or maybe just as a as an independent person out there. And you're getting you're seeing the revenues come in July, August, September. You're seeing those revenues come in. You're seeing those payments come in. And you, as we move into the very last part of the year, you can really see the future. You made some big milestones over these middle months, and as we get into the later month, you can really see the future, and you can really see where it's going. And there's very, very likely going to be some strong partnership with this Knight of Rods. No gender again, so but just a fire sign person. Fire signs being Leo, Aries, Sagittarius, or again we could be looking at that time frame of the Sagittarius, which is going to be in late November into December. Yeah, the totem. We've got the cat. Yeah, the cat is, you know, the cat kind of does their own thing. That's what I'm getting about this. I was tying it to this Nine of, uh, of Pentacles. You kind of have, you have this vision. You have this vision of what you're creating and the flourishing and everything is here. And be like the cat. Don't be like, there's no, uh, no need for approval or don't worry about what other people are thinking the cat just does what they do and they do they do them and they do it well you know and the cats are cool they keep their cool uh, stealth huntress of the night ancient intelligence familiar of the goddess 
waiting patiently for the time to act and being flexible with balance and grace. Yeah, so keep doing your thing, and when the time to act is going to be, you'll be you'll be ready, waiting patiently, and then boom, you're off and running. And I do see a lot of success for you uh, this year, and maybe even some love energy. But it feels like it's this is creativity applied more towards what you're doing in your career sector, to, to me. All right, well, let's go ahead and see about our Leos for the upcoming year. Leo, this is going to be a, a mini scaled down version of. The year ahead that I do for the personal reading, it's only available for a while. So if you think you might like it, we'll do it's more astrology at the beginning. And we look at a lot of things in your what's hitting in your chart, and then we do three cards instead of two. And it's a psychic reading, you know, tuned in directly at you. It's not just a random collective reading. But anyways, January, February, March for our Leos. Knight of Swords and Six of Cups. Somebody coming back from the past would seem. April, May, June for our Leo. April, May, June. April, May, June. Ooh, a couple of tens. You know, when you get those tens, those are those endings. Ten is the end. Ten is the most. And then we've got July, August, September. Your solar return time should be more of your power time. I think I did a card going the wrong way there. Three of Rods and the Magician. Yeah, I did. There's three going the wrong way. I'm going to, well, there's four. Okay, I'm going to take the top one, and then I'm going to put the rest back, and we're going to pull one more. I don't want to put four. Okay, October, November, December for Leo. There you go. It's interesting to me that you have the beginning of the spread, for the beginning of the year, you've got the Knight of Swords, and then at the end of the year, we've got the King of Swords. Oh, sorry, that, that made a loud noise. That fell off the thing here. It's still good, though. Um, it's interesting. So there's somebody that's going to be there for the duration, I want to say. That's one, one way to look at it. Somebody's going to be there for the duration. Somebody's going to be there for the long haul. Uh, but also um, relationships maturing and changing over the year. Starting out with the Knight of Swords coming right in. Now, there's no gender in these readings, so it could be anybody. It's not necessarily a young man, but an air sign person. Aquarius, Gemini, Libra probably coming in around that time of the Aquarius energy. So that's going to be late January into February. Six of Cups sometime into the past, it would seem. So it could be somebody from your childhood. It could be even your own children. I'm trying to put my body maybe and I can see that glare on the bottom. <laughs> it's just not going to work. Okay, um, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, so Six of Cups, some kind of thing from the past that is a heartfelt connection, the guys are saying. Somebody that is very special to you. And you have a lot of, you, they, you care for them greatly. You know, you really care for them. Some of them, you're going to be, your kids are going to be leaving home or something like that. April, May, June. This is the culmination time frame for you guys, you know. And we've got the Ten of Swords and the Ten of uh, Rods. Tens are tough sometimes, you know. We are having an eclipse uh, in that time frame. There's going to be an eclipse in April, at, not, in Aries, 19 degrees of Aries, April 8th. I wouldn't be surprised if this isn't tied into the eclipse for many of you. Both of the tens are you've reached the, the end of the road. You know, you've re you can't carry this heavy load anymore. You can't, you may, or you, somebody maybe have reached rock bottom or something. But the universe is definitely calling you to make a big change when you get these tens in, in your path, right? You can't go down this road anymore. You've got to go in a different direction. And then I see here by July, August, September that you have. You know, you've got that magician there. That's picking yourself up, dusting yourself off, striking out there again, feeling powered again, coming back from this kind of energy into full power and full full steam ahead. You've got the three of rods, your ships are coming in, you're going to see some success, you're going to get some... Uh, it, it's a lot of it is about you and your inner power with the magician, right? But then you're also going to see it in the external coming back to you. October, November, December, that's going to be some of the best times, I feel, of the upcoming year for you. You've got this beautiful energy of the temperance card, of co-creating with the universe, of, you know, your spirit guides and angels are working with you, and they are um, putting things together for you, uh, and you're th with this person, too. This person, I feel like it's the same person, maybe, from the beginning. For some, maybe not. But equally as good, you know, this air sign energy, which is, you're highly compatible with the air sign energy, Leo, because you're fire and air feeds fire. 
Uh, but air sign energy, Aquarius, Gemini, Libra, maybe showing up in the time of Libra in, you know, October or something like that. And, you know, just things are kind of evening themselves out. I'm getting that Libra, like with this, this Libra scales, like things are coming into balance. Things are coming into harmony. Things are, this isn't a, ch a childish relationship. This is a full-fledged adult relationship, you know, and it's a, it's a powerful and good one. Okay, let's get our animal totem for Leo for 2024, the Stingray. That card hardly ever comes out, and it's one of my favorite cards. And it reminds me of so much of Scorpio. Elegant, electric, fluid, deep, unwavering persistence, ambition, responsible wielding of innate power, maneuvering gracefully through life. Yeah, well, it could even be this is the Stinger. And then this is you, you know, doing that maneuvering gracefully through life. Because, Leos, you always are. You're so regal. You're so graceful. You know, that's you hands down all the time anyway. You know, you hold your head high and walk on because you're very proud and regal. And that's one of your best qualities. All right, Leo, like I said, if you want to get this reading for yourself, it's more in-depth. We do astrology, we do three cards per row, and it's very affordable, you know, and I want to, it's my little gift, you know, for everybody for the next upcoming year. Next, we're going to move on to the sign of Virgo. All right, Virgo's, again, scaled down version of the actual year ahead personal readings that I'm offering, if you skip the intro, and we're going to start with the first three months of the year, January, February, March, for our Virgos, and we have... Queen of Cups with Ace of Pentacles, so some kind of money coming in. April, May, June uh, for our Virgos. April, May, June, April, May, June, April, May, June, April, May, June for our Virgos. One, two, three. And we've got Ten of Pentacles with the Hermit. Okay, July, August, September, July, August, September, July, August, September, July, August, September, July, August, September. For our Virgos, we've got... Lovers and Nine of Cups, which is coming true regarding a lover. Well, kind of, that's why I was feeling off of this card up here. But we'll get, we'll get there in a minute. Let me get the last two cards out, October, November, December. So we're November, December for our Libras. Wow, Nine of Pentacles and Page of Pentacles. So money looks really good, I mean, but love too. Love is definitely showing up, you know, for you guys. All right, Queen of Cups, water sign person, no gender, could be anybody. Baby showing up in water sign time, Pisces, late February into March, but bringing this Ace of Pentacles, bringing this new beginning in money. For some, this is somebody who you are, is, says, hey, you want to come work for me, or I have this money for you. You know, they're, they're the one offering the money. For some people, this could be a romantic partnership. Maybe your partner gets a great new job, and then that changes the, you know, that adds to, uh, you know, your prosperity, or, or, or not. Maybe you're just very happy for them that they, they're getting what they want. But at any rate, it does feel like there is a lot of happiness surrounding this whole thing. And this person is positive uh, force in this whole situation. April, May, June, you've got this Ten of Pentacles here. So it could be for some an inheritance or some kind of a sale of a property or some kind of a big financial shift. And now the hermit, that can be like, well, just wait. Let's just wait and think about it before we do anything. You know, we've got this money. Now what are we going to do with it? But hermit can also be because it is the counsel. It can be the wise counsel. So maybe you're talking to a lawyer or somebody who's, you know, preparing these, con could be some sort of big contract, some kind of big money contract for some people. But it's definitely very powerful, you know, from, from here to here, ace to ten. So you've got, you know, a big shift in your finances are available. Hermit, if it is contracts of something, of course, have the lawyer or whoever look it over. July to September, your wish is coming true regarding this love relationship. So if you if you're single and looking, then your lover could show up then, or you could this is them, and then you could meet you know make the commitment here, or if it's a long term partnership, maybe something wonderful is really happening in their life again. I feel like that's for a lot of Virgos. I feel like that is, and thinking about how Saturn's in your opposite sign, I mean. Um, you know, as many of your, your partners could be really making big life shifts right now. Even if your partner's not a Pisces, it's just the fact that that's your partner's sign, you know. Um, you could be, many partners could be making some big shifts. Whatever the case, wish card is always a welcome. It's just a, what it says, your wish is coming true with the lovers. October, November, December, news is coming in the time of Earth. So right at the end of the year, perhaps, but Nine of Pentacles. 
Nine and Ten of Pentacles, you know, so money is definitely going well for you, definitely flourishing. Some kind of next level thing could be coming. You'll get the news perhaps around around this time frame. And it's like, it feels like it's taking it to the next level. You know, whatever you've accomplished here through your hard work and effort, which you guys are so diligent and you do all the time, Virgo, right? Bam, this comes up to that the next level of it. Okay, let's get our animal totem for our Virgos. I thought I was doing Libra. That's weird. I wonder if I messed up. But we're doing Virgo. If I said Libra at any time, don't worry about it. Whatever's here is what we're doing. You got the fox. You know, the fox can be that sly thing, but I think it's just really many of you are going to be in this time of a lot of, you know, having that sexual mojo going on, feeling really physical and wanting that physical lovemaking and sexual energy around you with this fox stuff. You're gonna, and maybe you'll even be feeling pretty foxy yourself, right? <laughs> Sly, sexy, charming, shapeshifter, elevated sense of smell, acute heal hearing, and mediumship. Camouflage, retreat, insulate, survive. Keep to yourself until you know who to trust. Well, that could be that keep to yourself... You know, we could relay that a little bit into that hermit energy. But overall, you have a rocking good year here, it looks like, uh, Virgo. And I'm really happy for you. It looks awesome. Again, don't forget, if you want to really go dive into your stuff, this would be a more in-depth reading. This is just a little bit of a condensed uh, sample of what the year ahead kind of looks like when you order it. All right, next we're moving on to the sign of Libra. Well, Libra, we would definitely have a lot of astrology to talk about because there's two eclipses in your sign, okay? So we would go into that uh, and see what planets it's hitting with you and different things. But overall, there's a full moon lunar eclipse in March in your sign, and then there's going to be a new moon solar eclipse in your sign October 2nd. So big year for Libras. You know, this is going to be a big one. This eclipse energy always changes things around, okay? But let's look at the cards for January, February, March for our Libras. We have the Seven of Pentacles and the Six of Cups. Okay, <clears throat> January, February, March. So, looking at the money situation, some of you may be feeling like, well, we got all these bills after the holidays. What are we going to do? I'm going to pay this card off and do this, you know, move some money around and this kind of a thing. In the meantime, there is something coming back from the past here. Um, it's funny, the guides want me to use the term annuity. So some of you may be getting an annuity. But I was really going more with personal relationships with this Six of Cups, which usually there is that element to it. <coughs> Excuse me. But any, at any rate, this is a card of love and happiness, so there is some kind of joyous thing. The way it's, this one looks this way and this looks this way, it almost feels like it's just completely two different things and not really related. Just, you know, it's a three-month period, so there's a couple different things going on. Um, but assessing your finances and then some kind of really joyous, happiness, lovey thing, like possibly with somebody from the past. April, May, June, that's when that first, uh, or March is when the first eclipse hits, but we're in eclipse season here as well. Many of you are walking away from a situation, clearly. You know, you've got this Nine of Swords. This is, I'm up, I'm worried about it. I'm up late at night. It's hurting my feelings. Crisis. And it's just like, you know what? I'm moving on. This is a card of moving on. Even if you've spent eight or nine months or eight or nine years in this relationship or in this situation, you know, and with this moon on here, it could be that um, Aries eclipse, which is happening on April 8th. At, that, at 8th, there's an 8 again. Yeah, so it might be around that Aries April 8th eclipse when you just decide, you know what, I've had enough, I'm moving on. And then as we move into July, August, September, the healing begins. The healing begins and you begin to remember what it's like to be happy. That's really what I want to say. I feel like for some of you, the situation was squelching, you know, and it was so stifling for such a long time that you really, you know, you... Um, you start to remember what it's like when people are cool and nice and they don't make you feel like crap, you know, and and you, 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 you're you getting your mojo back. You're feeling, you know, you're feeling better. You're feeling better about yourself through a lot of socialization, but also uh, taking time for rest and recuperation and getting over this crisis or whatever it might be. 
by the time we get to the end of the year, here you are looking like the Knight of Swords. You know, that's the air sign person, regardless of gender. Could be some traveling going on. I'm really getting the, the sense of movement with this Knight of Swords. And then also with this chariot, you know, this is movement, but it's also big success. As I've been saying, because the chariot's been out so much uh, this with this reading, you know, is that phoenix rising from the ashes. And um, this is you coming out of that healing time and just really being back. You know, you're back in the saddle again. I'm back in the saddle again. I'm back. Dum, 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 I'm back in the saddle again. Uh, that was my bad, poor rendition of that Aerosmith too. <laughs> dum, dum, dum. Something like that, the, the, the low part is. So anyways, let's get your animal totem, Libra. I'm going to have to listen to that song later now. <laughs> the owl. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> well, the owl is really cool energy. The owl is nocturnal. The owl is wisdom. The owl is the wisdom that you're going to get out of it. The owl is the teacher, the spiritual teacher. What was the lesson in all this? You know, it could be, you know, when you have the self, what's happening while you're having these eclipses in your sign is because the south node is transiting your sign. So it's, it can be these big spiritual karmic lessons that are coming up at this time for you. But the owl being here is, you know, it's just really confirming that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Silent flyer of the night. Occult messenger of the spirit realm. Transmutation through expansive vision. Transmutation through expansive vision. Clearing of obstacles at a miraculous rate. Yeah, I feel like once you make this change, it, it, a lot of things are going to change, you know. And Libra, sometimes you're nice and you stay when you should leave. And, you know, these eclipses are really, you know, putting these things in your face. These big turning points and these, you know, big, big events. Okay, again, if you want me to, well, there'll be plenty to look at if you have Libra anything. You know, if we, if you order the reading, we'll look at these eclipses. We'll look at the astrology. We'll look at the transiting node. And it'll be hitting directly conjunct your Libra planets, you know, so it'll be intense. Uh, but anyways, let's, without further ado, let's go on to the sign of Scorpio. Okay, Scorpio, if you skip the intro, this is a condensed version of my year ahead reading, which normally would be quite a bit of astrology, looking over your, your planets and seeing where your transits are going to hit. And then I, I'm going to do two cards here, but normally in the personal reading, I do three cards, and I'm tuning in specifically to you, so that's... Just want to give everybody a little taste of what it might be like. And on to Scorpio of 2024, January, February, March. The Emperor and the Lovers. Okay. Next April, May, June. 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 King of Cups, that's you. And Page of Cups. Okay. Next we're going to go on to July, August, September. That one wanted to come out. And then we're going to do one more. <clears throat> three of rods. Hangman, three of rods. And we're going to go on to October, November, December for Scorpios. That one and that one. Okay. All right, well, some of you, the emperor is here. So the emperor is taking notice of you, but some of you may be the emperor. Some of you may be the emperor. Some of you may be, the emperor may be bestowing gifts on you or, you know, giving you money, promotion, you know, some kind of career thing. Others of you, you may be involved romantically with uh, an emperor. And the emperor is also genderless in these readings because the emperor is the person in the position of authority. You know, it doesn't have to be, it's not necessarily a male or any, you know, any gender. So, but whatever the case, that you're stepping into this power and it's a positive thing. It's not like, oh, I've got to contend with this emperor. <laughs> you know, I've got to contend with this guy who thinks he's the emperor and is bossing everybody around. No, this is very positive energy. And the lovers, you know, there's definitely this love energy is blooming and it does feel like it's tied into this in some way. You know, I've got those Aries, those little rams, if you can see them on the, on the thing that's kind of grabbing my eye. And by the way, let that happen. If stuff grabs your eye, you know, that the universe talking to you. See that little Aries symbol kind of thing? So it could be, we might be talking in the time of Aries, which is, you know, in this segment would be late March, but then the fourth month of April too. As we move into the next sector, this is your card, you know, regardless of your gender. Um, 
this is the water sign person but this could also so close to the lovers this could also be your love interest but there's definitely you know this these want to feel like they're kind of all together here you know and there's going to be a lot of emotional stuff a lot of love energy going on around this time um offers of love accepting you know mutual exchange they both got their cup oh you know that's their love their their loving cup they're um, they're wearing their heart on their sleeve they're they're saying i care for you i care for you too you know it's 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 mutual it's confirmed and this very much feels like a, a very strong romantic stuff going on now it could be just some kind of an offer of a creative idea and if that's the case this could be the timing of water which is going to be cancer as we move into late june this could also be, because sometimes I'll use this as a card of a spirit child who's not born yet. So some of you, there could be a child conceived at this time, or they're, you're, they're reaching up from the spirit realm and you know acknowledging the soul contract of, I'm going to be coming into the earth plane and we're going to know each other. But it's very powerful, wonderful, emotional love energy going on. Soulmate connection for sure. July, August, September, you've got this hangman. So the hangman is not being an agonized or he's not tortured he's just taking it all in you know he's just paused in reflection he's enlightened you know you always got to remember that the hangman has that halo because he's receiving enlightenment he's getting those downloads and it's showing you the next step you know it's showing you the next step then the way to go the three of rods where your success lies the direction you want to go in you can see out, out the horizon what's going to come your way you're getting that vision of it so then you can start manifesting it into the 3d reality first you get the vision then you then you manifest it um, um, the other thing, uh, as we move to the end of the year, we've got the world here. So, I mean, attainment. Something that's being taken away from you is going to be returned many times over. So if there's something where you felt like, I lost out on this, or I wasn't treated fairly, or somebody got what was should have been mine kind of energy, the universe is, the universe is on that. They're on top of that. And they're going to bestow you whatever was missing, whatever you've been waiting for, is going to come back to you a hundred times over, the guides are saying. So you didn't really lose anything. You're going to, and for some people, it's making up for lost time. You're going to be making up for lost time. But in a big way with the world. I mean, and there's no going back to this. That's what they're saying, too. That's, this, this is over. So there's no going back to that. We're in a new paradigm. You're stepping into that new paradigm. Okay, for Scorpio, 2024, we got the frog. That's one of your, I feel like that's one of your animal totems anyway because of the whole death and rebirth and transformation. You know, it's the nude and the tadpole and the whole thing. And, and then when you get to the frog, just like when you get to the king of cups, it's that fully realized. Also because of the water element. You know, this, this frogs really remind me of Scorpio. I think that's a good all, all the time totem for Scorpios, right? Rainmaker, alchemist, clairaudient, fertility, transformation, metamorphosis, safe passage into the netherworld, the final stages of growth, you have arrived. Yeah, when you see that you have arrived with that three of rods, you know, there's big success for you too. But in the material world, yes, perhaps, but maybe a little bit more. More of it's about your own, yeah, your own I don't know, vindication or your own... Um, you know, uh, what you've transmuted, what you've gone through, where you are, how you've grown, you know, to become to this full blossoming thing with the world and the king and the frog. You know, you're, you're really blossoming outward. All right, Scorpio, if you want me to take a look at all your stuff as far as the transits go, and then we'll do a more of a psychic reading geared just to you and more cards, too, then you can check out the personal year aheads that will be available only through December. So for a limited time, and I, where is my... Some of my cards are missing. We'll find them. Okay, Sagittarius. This is going to be a scaled-down version of the year ahead that I do offer. It's a personal reading uh, every year at this time. And this one's going to be for the Sagittarius Collective. And we're going to look at January, February, and March for our Sagittarius. Moon and star. Like the moon and the stars and the sun. Yeah, we all shine on. On and on and on. So you're going to be shining on, baby. All right. Next up, we've got Knight of Pentacles with the Four of Cups for April, May, June, and then July, August, September for our Sagittarians. July, August, September, we've got 
your ship's coming in after maybe a betrayal or something of that nature, October, November, December. We've got Six of Rods with the, uh, I was going to say the Scorpio card, but it's, <clears throat> it's actually the Knight of Rods, which could be any of the signs. It's not necessarily just Scorpio, but uh, since I blurted out Scorpio, I'm going to go ahead and say, yeah, it's probably going to be at Scorpio time, right? So here's where we start off the year. We start off the year with, um, I'm just getting a the rest of those cards are some different ones, so we have a little bit of papers here. We're looking at the moon and the star, so I really love that. I mean, these are major arcana cards, they're higher force cards, they're cards of higher, um, higher dimensional is really what I want to say, but you know, the higher guidance, your spirit guides, angels, definitely with the star, but also the moon. You know, the other thing that the moon is, is that dream state. You know, that's your own subconscious mind, your own imagination the dream state, and you could be really communing with your guides and angels and really getting a lot of insights or, you know, being in that state in your sleep. Some people never remember your dreams, so if you don't remember them, it may be you don't remember them, you know. But others, you know, you may be getting like these big downloads through your dreams and stuff like that. You know what else is coming through? They're talking about, um, they're talking about, um, be doing dream work, whether maybe it's, um, you know, astral travel or lucid dreaming or maybe, you know, trying to, because it's that's a good thing to do anyway. You know, you ask a question before you fall asleep and then you wake up. Maybe you'll have a dream about it, but maybe you'll just wake up kind of knowing the answer, right? All right, April, May, June, we're getting more practical. That's grabbing me. We're, you know, we're in the kind of in a little woo-woo or a little bit of a spiritual cloudy kind of a situation in the first couple of months but then april may june we're getting more practical we're getting grounded in the earth particularly in the time of taurus late april may could be an earth sign type or earth sign, actual earth sign or earth time sign type of energy um in this earth uh why can't i get out of my mouth the knight of pentacles wow that was weird that i couldn't say it there the Knight of Pentacles, so Taurus, Capricorn, or Virgo, or coming in and Earth, and again in Taurus, making some kind of an offer. Could be a love offer, whatever the case, with the star raining down these blessings on here, it's definitely kind of, you could say maybe heaven sent, or it's kind of, you know, there's something magical or otherworldly perhaps about it. But that this is an offer, and it's saying, you know, this card can say, well, I'm not really sure if I want to, whatever, but they're saying, yes, you, you better be sure it's really something and I just looked at this I don't know if it's gonna if you, it's gonna translate or if it's just me but I saw big this little thing right here above my pointer when I looked at that and I've never seen that it says big so whatever it is it feels like it's gonna be really big for you guys okay July August September your ships are coming in and something's being taken away from you at the same time you know, this is sometimes the universe kind of throws those things in our path to make us change our course, throws us those curveballs, is what they're saying, so that we have to go in another direction. And then we've got this uh, three of rods, my ships are coming in, you know, so this, this is a success. This is, even though you, you something's maybe going down, you may be getting pushed out of a situation that was bad anyway. But... Um, it, it ends up being good. I mean, I feel like you can see it right away. It's just like, oh, they're going to start to be this way? Well, guess what? I'm going to turn my attention somewhere else, and that's going to be the right direction, where you're going to, as the year ends, you're going to get down here to the Six of Rods and get get this victory, you know, get this victory, this triumph, get this success, um, probably in the time of Scorpio or involving a scorpion or involving another water sign person uh, because of this water sign energy here. But whatever this is, it's just putting in your path to make you turn the corner, kind of make you go the other way. I wouldn't be surprised if it's not around that um, lunar eclipse on the 17th in Pisces because that's making a square to your side stuff. And, you know, you could be like, okay, I see where this is going. I'm not, I'm not going to, it's It's just like, this is just like a blip almost. Like, I'm not even going to entertain this. I see, you know, I'm asking, for, you're asking for signs from the universe, and then the universe is going to show you some things. And I don't feel like, again, you don't waste a whole lot of time about it. You're just not like, oh, please be nice to me, or la da 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 what this and that. You're like, okay, later. <laughs> you're, 
you're uh, you're on to bigger and better things, which pays off for you. You know, you don't waste a lot of time there. Okay, let's get that Sagittarius animal totem. Get the rabbit. So you're gonna you a lot of abundance when you get the rabbit. Abundance and also magic. You know, rabbits are magic. The magicians use the rabbits and pull them out of their hats and everything. But the abundance, ma rabbit's a major abundant uh, symbol. Sensitive, artistic, clever, nimble. Outsmarting adversaries by staying one step ahead. Taking colossal leaps and sprinting into the future. Heightened libido and procreation. Yeah, you know, with this card too, maybe somebody of, of yours thinking of starting a family, that could be this whole thing here. Maybe that's what this is all about. It feels it's kind of more on a financial or career-based thing, but for, it's going to be different for everybody, okay? Well, if you wanted to get the reading yourself, we could really take a look at it. And again, it's much more in-depth than this. And we do spend time on astrology, more in the beginning of it. So that's, that's a big part, and that really helps me... Even if you don't really like astrology that much, uh, that doing your astrology and looking at your placements, that really helps me zero in on your energy. That's why I like to do it, too. And I get a lot of insights through it, too. Okay, next we're going to move on to uh, the sign of Capricorn. Okay, Caps, if you skip the intro, this is a scaled-down version of the year-ahead reading that I'm offering and offer every year and have been. Again, in the real reading, the personal reading, you get astrology for the year, and then we do this, and we do more cards. We're only going to do two cards for each quarter of the year, starting with January, February, March, for our Capricorns. Justice after the Ten of Swords. Wow. Well, some of you are going to... Justice will be done. We could say that. April, May, June. Gosh, Tower comes out. Let's pull another one. And then the Emperor. So, man, Capricorn, what Pluto? Pluto, this is Pluto energy for sure. And if this doesn't resonate, not everybody's going to have these big shakeups in their lives. You know, you might want to check your rising and moon. But I'm going to, you know, we're going to throw the cards that are come, come. By the way, if you ever noticed, uh, just a little side note, I've noticed this. I'm not calling out anybody in specific. There's 78 cards in a tarot deck. It's a thick deck. And if you ever see some of the readers are only like this, that's because they've taken all the bad cards out. I, I know specifically, I've seen a couple that do that for sure. Because you'll never see a sword, you'll never see, and, you know, it's always the good cards. And look at the, how many cards they have in their hand. They're not, they're not using the whole deck. I use the whole deck. It's all part of it, okay? October, November, December for our Capricorns. We got here. The devil, that's, but that's your card, and magician. So you're going to come out of this stronger than ever. You know, I know I hear you Capricorns, and I'm one of you. It's just like, I, well, why do we always have to be strong? <laughs> when can we stop being strong all the time? <laughs> you know, <laughs> Capricorns, you know, we've had Pluto in our sign for, since 2008. It's been, it's been a wild ride. I do think, if I'm not mistaken, let me just double check on this. I don't think that it's going after 25. It's not going in yet. So this is definitely the last dance with Pluto for this year. And boy, you know, that's this is the kind of energy you see with the Pluto stuff. Again, it's not going to resonate for everybody. You check your rising moon, but we get something surely is, you know, you're feeling defeated or down, but justice is here. Some of you, this could be a specific incident. Maybe there was some kind of uh, whatever, you know, some way you were done wrong in whatever way, and that, that there is this retribution, this legal recourse or retribution. But justice is done. And, and I feel like it's done, done with this suffering, too. It's bringing an end to the suffering. April, May, June, we've got the tower with the emperor. Now, tower is, could be, we could drag this on, and this could be still part of this whole thing, and we're still agonizing over it. But it also, Tower is this, this big stuff, this big upheavals. And we're going to be, this is eclipse season. And now that the eclipses are in Aries and Libra, these are making squares to the Capricorn stuff. You know, this is the cardinal stuff that we talk about all the time, the cardinal cross, right? So these eclipses are happening here in Aries and Libra, and here's Capricorn square. You know, it's making that square. It could bring about those difficulties or force try to force you into a change. But honestly, if I get rid of that, <laughs> if I don't look at that part and I just look at this, this looks for some that this could be a huge opportunity because the emperor is here. For some of you, it could be their emperor saying, hey, the company's closing. You're going to be out of a job. I'm sorry, but it could be something like that. 
but whatever it is, it's for your highest good. I know that's never fun to hear. Oh, it's for your highest good when you're going through some major thing like this. But for some of the what I got really was like, wow, the emperor out of the blue. And it feels like there is this major surprise element to it. Like I, I saw you on Facebook or I saw you on Instagram or I saw you on YouTube. And it's this imp emperor that can change your life, like for in the best possible way, beyond hopes and dreams and stuff like that. So, if, for some of you, if you have, if you're out there on social media in any way, and I don't feel like it's that anything you have to try, like, hey, here I am, here I am. It's just some kind of there's some kind of crazy synchronicity or weird thing that goes on for some people, and this is a nice, you know, change of success. July, August, September, there's certain things that you're just never going to win. You know, you're just never going to win. Never going to get it, never going to get it. Never going to get it, never going to get it. Never going to get it, never going to get it. Mm, you'll get it. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah, some people are just never going to get it. you got to know when to fold them and when to fold them. They're giving me that song now. <laughs> the old Kenny Rogers tune. So it might be time to fold them. It might be time to back off. You know, just back off of this stuff. Get in your own power. Get in your own zone. We get into the end of the year, and for many of you, that could be your birthday time too. But the devil's there, so don't be in bondage to that. They're saying that with this setup. But the devil is also your card. And I almost wanted to say, like, stepping into your own power of... Not the devil, but the high, you know, the, the devil is the major arcana card for the Capricorn. So coming into, from the lower level of the human interactions of the minor arcana to the higher calling of whether, you don't have to think of it as the devil, just stepping into that higher resonance or that higher self. All, the, all three of these remind me of that. And you're going you're gonna to be back stronger than ever here, Capricorn. Again, I hear you. It's just like, do, when, when can I stop being strong? When do I have to stop being... Why do I always have to be the strong one? Because that happens with Capricorn. Because, you know, you're ruled by Saturn. And you, you take on a heavy karma in this life. And you have to be adults when you're kids. And it's a lot. You know, it can be a lot. And Capricorns always seem to have to carry those heavy burdens. And... Uh, but you've got past this one, you know, you're not going to see Capricorn, Pluto's not going to be in Capricorn again for another whatever, couple hundred, three hundred years or something. So whatever it did over those last, you know, 15 years, it's, you're out of it. Hey, Caps. The swan, beautiful energy of just what I was kind of saying with the, um, you know, this whole thing of the Pluto and the transformation, because obviously, the, you know, the story of the ugly duckling, you know, the ugly duckling. It was kind of, it was a misfit, or considered a misfit, or didn't fit in, or, you know, was uh, different, or not, uh, not like the other ducklings, because they were the magician, or the swan, they were the really the beautiful swan, and they were, ma by making themselves small and trying to be a duck, they just were never going to be a duck, you know, because they were always a swan. Graceful, beauty, loyal, partner and friend, recognizing the divine within us all. Transformation, that's Pluto. Uh, emerging of true being, emergence of true being, loving yourself at all stages, yeah. Taking time to love yourself even when you're immersed in all this struggle and, you know, people tend to lay stuff on you, you know, help me Capricorn, you, you're so dutiful and dedicated and, you know, you got to take that time to love yourself even when you're still struggling to get to that top of the mountain or whatever the case. All right, Caps, that was kind of a crazy reading. I mean, watch your sun, rising moon. And again, if you want to get a personal reading, we'll, we'll look into it, I'm sure. It'll be different for every... Well, it's always different for everybody, right? Okay, next let's move on to the sign Aquarius for 2024. Okay, Aquariuses, let's get into your 2024 tarot scope. Again, if you skip the intro, the actual reading that I do for personal readings there is for sure astrology in it. We look at a lot of astrology and that helps me really tune into your energy and then we do the tarot and there's more cards. Okay, um, Aquarius, January, February, March. Okay. April, May, June for Aquarius. April, May, June. April, May, June. April, May, June. Aquarius. Oops, I got three. Sometimes I'll let three come, but in the real reading, uh, it's three. And it's in reverse, too. But we're going to turn it up, right? 
July, August, September for Aquarius for 2024. July, August, September for Aquarius. Column really grabbed me. And then the last October, November, December for Aquarius. October, November, December. October, November, December for Aquarius. Okay. Well, you're starting out the year with the magician. You're starting out there feeling transformed. I mean, Pluto's going to go into your sign. It was in there a little bit last year, and it's going to go in. It's going to go in, dip out, and be in permanently for years to come. You know, I don't know how many years. A lot. <laughs> and it's going to be. Well, we could. I guess we could find out. We might as well find out because I'll probably be talking about it. I might as well figure out how long it's going to be in there. Oh yeah, long, yeah, long, 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 long time. I'm just look. This is an ephemeris. If you're not familiar. And I'm just scaling through here. It's going to stay, it's not going to dip into Pisces until 2043. So that means it's in your sign. It'll probably dip in and out, but I mean, it's it's in your sign for a long time. 20 years at least, you know. So a long time. So transformation for sure. But it feels like at the beginning of the year you're, you're set to go. They, they say you're on the path to glory. That's what the, uh, 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 the guys are. I'm hearing that song too. Down in a blaze of glory. They're saying going down in a blaze of glory. I'm not. I'm not grabbing it. I think it's Bon Jovi, maybe down in a blaze of glory or something like that. But anyways, it's not down. It's up. When you got the Sun card and the Magician, both of these cards are so much about being empowered. You know, having that life force flowing through you. Being, you know, forging that path, making that, making that way, and shining your light, and being so super empowered. There is some kind of a big change that happens here. Something that you might have to let go of. April, May, June. It's just, you know, it's a stalemate. It's not going anywhere. And you know, spirits sending you messages, or you just might be thinking in your head, you know what? I, I get the feeling like this isn't going anywhere. Maybe I need to cut this situation loose. It's going to be different for everybody, but it feels like what you're thinking in your mind, you're probably right. Especially if you're thinking about, well, this just doesn't seem like it's going anywhere. It seems like it's a dead end. It might be a time to make a really big change at this time. July to September, you know, that, that patience and calm, be calm. But you're going to have some kind of new money showing up for many. And I want to really... I've, Leo time is really grabbing me. It doesn't necessarily, maybe because of the lion here, but it grabbed me over here. And the lion over here kind of confirms it. And plus eight, the eighth month, so it might be in August. It could be late July. But, you know, this is this money showing up for you. And then you're having this eight, this foundation, this Saturn foundation kind of energy to carry you forward and make it into something really solid and really long lasting. We get down here into October, November, December, and you've got this uh, news is coming, and you're going to be in conversation is really grabbing me, probably right off the bat while we're in the air sign of Libra. And then um, you've got the Nine of Pentacles here. So that is, um, you know, having that uh, success in business, but it's also just being really comfortable. You know, it's not all about the money. I mean, it's a Pentacle card and it is about the money, but she's very comfortable. And she's not, it's not ten of rods where you're working, working yourself to death. It's nine of pentacles where you're enjoying your prosperity, you're enjoying your life, you're flourishing, you know, those kinds of things. And it's, it, you know, by the end of the year, a lot is ironed out and you're in a pretty good place, especially with your money and finance. Okay, let's take a look at the animal totem for Aquarius. Howling at the moon. With that wolf energy, you're going to be howling at the moon. <laughs> Well, the wolf is the pack, too. But, you know, it's interesting because you have Nine of Pentacles and the Magician. Both are cards of very much of the individual. And even the Strength card, well, she's got the Lion, but she's kind of by herself. But the, when you have these two together, too, by the way, a lot of times in the same spread, this will be like having your own business very often. Wild spirit of the wilderness, impeccable instincts draw your path, needing freedom to roam far and wide, embracing the interdependency of all life. Yeah, but I feel like this reminds me of the moon and that reminds me of the moon. I just want to say like you're howling at that moon. And so get out and howl at that moon. I'm trying to see if there's any eclipses or anything. Um, full moon lunar eclipse in September, so maybe that's going to be a big one for you, September 17th. 
whatever the case, um, it feels like some nice energy surrounding you, and you're 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 kicking off this Pluto transit with like really being empowered and really really shining your light really brightly. Okay, let's move on. And by the way, if you want to order this for yourself and see how specifically it might affect you, and then we'll do three cards. You know, it's on, it's on my website, so check it out if you're interested. Oh, we dropped the sun card on the ground. We're going to move on to Pisces, but i got to get down here and get that card. I can see it's the sun card hanging on here, Pisces. Let me grab that. Uh, all right, I got it. It's kind of stuck under a thing over there. All right, I got it sort of under the shelves. Well, and there was a hair. <laughs> a hair came along with it. A couple of hairs. Let's get rid of the hairs. I guess I'm going to sweep my floor over there. Huh? <laughs> well, you know, if you have long hair like me, you know, there's fine hairs all over the place all the time. But anyways, this is for Pisces for 2024. If you didn't watch the intro, this is a scaled down version of the year ahead personal readings that I'm offering which is packed full of astrology, which Pisces, you know, Saturn and Pisces, is, your, your sign is getting a lot of astrology. So you know, Pisces, Sun, Rising, Moon, there's astrology to talk about. And then we do three cards in the personal reading. We're going to do two here. And this is the first row for Pisces for 2024, for January, February, March. And now for April, May, June, for our Pisces for 2024, April, May, June, April, May, June. Ten of Swords and Knight of Pentacles. This is going to be your next card here for July, August, September for our Pisces. Pisces. And then finally, October, November, December of 2024 for our Pisces friends. I know it's kind of corny, but I'm hearing that Don't Stop Believing song by Gemini. Uh, I almost said by Gemini. <laughs> by Journey. But maybe some of you are going to be dealing with a Gemini here. We've got an air sign down here. But let's start at the top. Two of Cups, very first card out. So definitely some soulmate energy. Don't be afraid to go for that. You know, don't be afraid to open up. Um, you have Saturn in your sign, so sometimes that can be sort of heavy energy. You know, you don't want to resist whatever Saturn's trying to show you here. You know, you want to kind of let Saturn. Saturn is the wise elder. It's Father Time, it's karmic stuff, but ultimately Saturn expressing itself in a positive manner is the wise elder. So you want to let the wise elder guide you and show you and put you in the direction that it's wanting you to steer you in. And there's soulmates along the way, starting right at the be very beginning of the year. It seems like you may be a little nervous or apprehensive, uh, apprehensive about going forward with it, but it's, it's going to be okay, Pisces. Yes, yeah, some of you are really nursing some wounds as we move into April, May, June. Some of you are really nursing some wounds. And, you know, that's one of the things, Pisces, you're so deep and you're so soulful, but you can get stuck in that. You can get stuck in a little bit of depression or get, you know, get in that kind of headspace. So we don't want to be in that headspace. We want to be open. And maybe by getting involved in work, or maybe this is even that soulmate partner, showing up as an earth sign person. So it could be a Taurus, Capricorn, or Virgo. Could be somebody showing up in the time of Taurus, late April through May. But it also, because he holds the pentacle and he lines up with some other pentacles, it could be some kind of a money situation. And even if it's a money situation, it still could be a soulmate because we have all types of soulmates, you know. But what I really got out of this, instead of wallowing in whatever this is, you know, that's going on here, being woeful, as the guides are saying, why not get involved in some kind of a work project and really put all your energy into that? And it's going to kind of maybe pull you out of the doldrums. And also Saturn in your sign. Saturn likes hard work. <laughs> Saturn rewards hard work, you know. This is a time of going to probably be a time of hard work, but hard work that's going to pay off and hard work that's going to set the precedence for the next maybe 29 years or so. So it's, it's a big time for you guys. July, August, September. Here it is again with this soulmate, this being stuck thing. I mean, um, some of you, you know, you're, gonna, you're being trying to maybe forced out of your job or forced out of a work or forced out of a career path. If that's the case, again, that's the Saturn kind of pushing you. It's pushing you in a certain direction. And uh, there's going to be other money available to you. Don't try, don't waste any time trying to convince anybody of anything. You know, don't fight it. Just keep, I keep hearing, don't stop believing. I can't get that sound out of my head for you. <laughs> don't 
Don't stop believing. See, so don't stop believing and just turn your direction, go in another direction. If you're, if you're coming up against something, that means you've got to turn this way. You've got to turn this way or this way. Don't just sit there, or don't sit there and cry about it. You know, get up and say, okay, this way is closed off, so that this means the universe is telling me I've got to go this way, I've got to go this way. Uh, but you got to, you know, keep moving forward. Uh, there is this air sign energy at the end of the year, and it's funny that I did say, um, you know, Gemini. So some of you, you might be looking at some kind of a Gemini person, but really it's just any of the air signs, including Aquarius, Gemini, or Libra. And it could be talking about the time of air, in this case it's going to be that October Libra time right off the bat. Note that they are in the same row as that soulmate energy way up at the top, but... I mean, there's a lot of this stuff to get through, you know, it's almost like that. It's, for some of you, there's a soulmate that's ready. It's, it's time to meet that romantic partner, but you've got to work through your emotional stuff to be ready to receive them and ready to allow that relationship into your life. Because there is, the holdup is there is this bondage, you know, something is in, the, in bondage. Maybe this, you or they were, were married or something, and that was the bondage, could be. You know, maybe when you originally met that maybe you were one of you or the other was married or in another relationship. Um, the devil card is also the card of Saturn in the, in the major arcana. And you do have Saturn in your sign, you know. So maybe just not even married. Maybe there's just other obligations going on. But I get for some people out there, this could be somebody that you made a connection with a long time ago. And with the Saturn, Saturn's going to bring all kinds of stuff that are meant for you. You know, there's going to be all kinds of stuff that's meant for you that maybe you overlooked or you didn't see before. And Saturn's like, hey, you remember this? What about this? This is what you're supposed to be doing. Okay, let's see here. Let's get your animal tone for Pisces friends. The pig. Pig is major abundance. You know, it's major abundance. When I look at it, I want to, I want, with these swords, I almost want to tie in. Maybe somebody is a pig, or you think of them as a pig. It could be like at a workplace, maybe, you know, somebody's, uh, you know, a pig. Chauvinist pig is what comes to mind. You know, that's kind of an old term, but it's just somebody who, you know, says really inappropriate things and, you know, makes those kind of comments. Or maybe if you're living in, with a roommate or a lover and they're, they are a pig, a slob, you know, they just leave stuff laying around and it bugs you. You know, it could be a lot of things, but ultimately pig is really a good card, honestly. Tenacious, steadfast, bold, independent, bringer of luck, prosperity, and wealth. Feast in gratitude, in, uh, feast and celebrate in gratitude. Prolific creation, a time of great fertility. Yeah, you're creating your reality. So you don't want to get stuck in this cycle of depression and that. I just want to see what the Chinese year, I should have looked, or I'm finally looking it up on the very last sign. <laughs> Uh, year uh, of 2024. Let's see what it's going to be. It's going to be the uh, year of the dragon, not the pig. Yeah, uh, but that I don't know. There could be you, some of you. You may want to look up the year of the pig. I guess I could real quick because I felt this twinge of like maybe is that some, you know uh, maybe somebody that you're dealing with. They're born in the year of the pig. Uh, let's let me just look it up real quick. But I'm kind of feeling like there is um, some kind of tie-in for some. Uh, the last one was 2019, so it could have been something time even going back to 2019 for some people. But again, it could be a, somebody you're dealing with, or maybe you yourself are born in the year of the pig. But that kind of came into play a little bit. I kind of felt that uh, maybe there's a connection there. But anyhow, I hope you guys enjoyed this reading. Uh, again, this is just a small taster. You know, this is just like a, a scaled down version. I go into astrology, we look at the eclipses and the major transits to your planets, and then I tune into specifically you. That Doing that first astrology thing really helps me really tune into you and make sure I've really got your energy too. And then I do three cards per row, and, and the reading's really geared to you and it's all about you. So if you think you might be interested, check it out. If not, thanks for joining me today. Please hit that like and subscribe and have a great one. Great new year. Bye.